soil meter goes down. Do 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 do. Boom. Hi, I'm Mark. And I'm Valerie. And we're at my home. So today we're going to take a look at some sensors. Now these are two different sensors from a company called Zynect, and they sent us these to check out. So this one is the Thermoat, and it's a temperature sensor. This one's called the Soil Moat, and it's a moisture sensor uh, for soil. So let's take a look. I'll open them up and we'll check them out. All right, so go ahead. All right, so this one is the Thermoat. Let me open up the package here. Is there a secret? Oh, here we go. Ah, that was easy. All right, so nice retail packaging. So these are heavy duty sensors. There's the instructions. And there's a little book. Hmm. Cute little nice. sticker. Sticker. Mm -hmm. right. And here's something. Now this is a magnet. Oh, that's cool. We're going to use this know? magnet when we do the installation. All right, here you go. Holy cow, look at the length of that thing. Yeah. So what's it say on this thing and what it does? Because here it is, look at this thing. This is pretty pretty heavy duty. As you can tell, it's all sealed up, so it's totally waterproof, which is really nice. And then the temperature probe is like, what, about 38 inches long? I don't know what... Hmm, pretty long, what does it say here? It says it's 38.5 inches. Oh, don't forget the half inch. All right, so that's kind of nice though because if you ever need to kind of put it somewhere instead of a lot of temperature sensors we've used are just a little device. This one here, you can kind of leave this outside and put this inside whatever you're measuring. So that's pretty nice. It's pretty good. How, what kind of range does it have? I think it has, uh, let's see. It says here it does from minus 55 to plus 125 degrees centigrade, which is... 77 degrees Fahrenheit to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. 257. So, well, 57? Uh -huh. Oh, like I transposed the digits. Either way, that's a really high temperature. That's a really long range. Right, so I think in our house, we're probably not, hopefully not have to worry about that temperature range. I hope not. Yeah, so uh, pretty easy uh, to use. So look at this thing. It's just got a, it's got a battery compartment in the back. That's it. And it just uses regular AA batteries, which is really nice. Yeah, so there's three of them inside here. And that's it for the temperature and I think they, they claim it will last what up to two years it depends how often you have this do the measurement so uh, pretty 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 decent here so that's the thermoat so we'll put that one and then let's open the other one all right here comes the soil moat here's the instructions directions again and the little book. Another book. Another sticker. And another sticker. So we're, we have all sorts of things. Well, this is kind of neat. That is a long card. So let's take a look. 85 inch soil probe. 85 inch? Mm -hmm. Really? Yep. It doesn't look like 85 inches, does it? Is it 85 inches or, or uh, millimeters? It says 85 inches. Well, is, I guess the 85 inches is this here. Yeah, right. that's the length. So there's the, the cables like 85 inches long. The probe itself goes from uh, zero to, uh, it is in millimeters, I was right. It, I don't know if you can see this or not. But it goes from uh, zero to uh, 90 millimeters in length for the probe. So the way it works is you just put this in the ground up to the red end here. That stays outside and then it measures moisture. Neat. That's pretty neat, huh? All right, yeah. So I think it's the same uh, features as the Thermoat. Again, basically, you know, it's waterproof, it's dustproof. I think it's IP67. I think that's the right numbers. Um, and uh, the batteries last a couple of years type of thing. Uh, but this this one happens to measure moisture from, what, 0 to 100%, I think. Yep, that's it, what it says. It says. So, so that's pretty cool. Now, I want you to observe something else in the bottom of this here, and that's the thing called a reset sticker. So... When you install this, you actually use this reset sticker, and I don't know if you hear this or not, but uh, when I take the battery out, I, there's a piece of paper in here to remove to start this thing up, and then what you do is you put this over the over here, and that does a, a reset. In actuality, reset's probably the wrong word. It really does, what it does, it puts the device into what's called calibration mode, and that's how we set it up. So, 
Um, so you need you need that magnet. Don't lose the magnet. All right. And what else? The other thing is it uh, works in Wi-Fi, correct? Yes, it works with Wi-Fi. And uh, it also works with uh, something else. This thing here, right? It also works with uh, something called LoRaWAN. And LoRaWAN is really neat because it has a much longer range. It's a low power, long range wireless standard. And uh, in order to use it, you do need a separate gateway. So you can either get one from Zynect or there's other Lora gateways on the market. But that's really neat if you want to measure soil or temperature uh, from a much longer distance than your normal household Wi-Fi. That is pretty cool. All right, so I guess the next thing we need to do is install this. Yep, let's install it and check it out. All right. So, Mark, it looks like you've already installed the thermos. I did. Oh? Well, I wanted to give it a try to see if I could understand how the app worked right before we, we did it and look for any issues in the setup. And one of the issues I did find in the setup was you do need to use the magnet and what it's for. So if it kind of falls out of the box on you, don't ignore it. It is a magnet. All right, so right now I'm in the screen. This is the dashboard of the application. And what you can see on here is... The first thing installed was the Thermote, and I called it at my home Thermote to give it a name. You can rename it. And uh, basically, you just uh, press on the uh, screen, and what it will do is it will bring up all the data. So it's actually loading the data from the servers that it's captured. And uh, it said uh, right now it's 73.6 degrees. Mm, where? Now, huh? Where? Well, right here. It's, it oh. must be there because it just measured it. Mm. Now, keep in mind, this thing measures, I think I have this set up to measure every 10 minutes. So it's whatever the temperature was, either now or 10 minutes ago, to up to 10 minutes ago because of the way it measures. Uh, but as you can see, it keeps track of the temperature, and it also has a graph over the last seven days of, of what, you, what you've measured. So you can see we actually had it in the freezer, so it was actually around mm, zero degrees. A little colder. And then I put it in the stereo cabinet, and it measured something else. But what's really nice about this is when you're in here, you can actually set the boundaries of where you get notified. So, for example... I just changed it for if its temperature falls below a certain point, then give me an alert and it'll give me a text message. And I can also do the same thing with the high end and above the temperature and give me an alert as that, that as well. And it even tells you when here, it says set points low of 10 degrees and a high of 134 degrees. So that's, I just set it that way. But you can set it to whatever you want just by moving this dial and bringing it down. And now the set points there and if the temperature would have changed, you would get an alert saying, hey, you, you, you're above your set temperature. All right. And then the other thing you can do, which is really nice, is you can say, oh, I want to look at a temperature range over a certain time period. So I can come in here and say, oh, let's say from the 10th of January to today, which is the 29th, I can say set the range. And now what's happening is it's downloading the data for that period of time. And then I can press this little thing that looks like mail. Looks like mail. And I can say, send an email to me with all the data. And it sends you basically a spreadsheet of data over that time period. So uh, you say yes. It says it successfully sent the data. And uh, that's it. And uh, as you can see here on the screen, I've got the data. It's in the spreadsheet. And you can see it tells you every single temperature it recorded over the 10 minutes of the part. And it tells you the, te the time and the day and the temperature uh, and also the battery level, so you kind of know where the battery level is. So that's pretty cool. The other thing is on this screen is you can actually say, I want to look at things from month, week, day, and year, which is really nice. I can also define which alerts I get. So the three alerts they have are sensors out of bounds, sensor goes offline, and the sensor comes online. So the first one, obviously, you need if you're going to measure the temperature exceeding what you want. Uh, but the offline and online is really nice to have, just in case you've kind of lost the Wi-Fi connection. Uh, it'll it'll remember the data, and then when it gets the connection again, it'll actually download that data so you don't lose the data. It's just you know whether you're on online or offline. You can also build a contact list. So you can go in here. I put Mark and Valerie here, so therefore, if anything happens like these alerts, both of us get the alert. And you can add other contacts if you like. And then they have something called the danger zone. Mm. that sound cool? Yeah. So the danger zone... You have to check a box to enable it, and there's two things you can have. Enable sharing, so this is if I want to share the data with some other, someone else. They could actually have access to this thermo. And uh, the other one is unclaim the sensor, so if you no longer want to have it, like, for you, you can unclaim the sensor. Also, no, if you want to give it to somebody else to use. or That's right. Now, when you do that, of course, now they have access to all the, the data, and you don't. 
So just remember if you unclaim That's it. That's why it's a danger zone. It's a danger zone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So what else is in here? So let's go back. Uh, then you have the account. And in the account, the big thing here is you can set the temperature units to centigrade or Fahrenheit. And you can set to dark mode if you'd like. Oh. So if you're exciting. a dark mode user, you can you set up dark mode. So pretty much it. Then there's you can change your password. That's the danger zone here is setting your password. <laughs> I actually like how they use the word danger zone, right? So these are the ones you don't want to mess with, I guess. So the next thing is we need to install this. So I think it gave us a card with the instructions, right? Oh, here we go. All right, so tell me what to do. Uh, well, download the Zynex Sensors app. Okay, so let's see. If, if, I, if you don't have it, let me show you what it looks like. All right. So... You can also just scan the little QR code and it'll bring it right up in the App Store. What? Oh, wait, why am I doing this then? Let me do that. Oh, that's better. It says view in App Store. All right, so we view it in the App Store. And that's the app. So this is kind of give an idea of what it looks like. So that's the Zynex Sensors app. Do your regular download. It also works in Google. Obviously. Obviously. And it brings back up the app. So now we have it up there. Now what do we do next? Remove, open the bar, open the battery compartment, remove the tab from the batteries and screw it closed. So let's open this up. So if you look here, it's got a seal on it and the door, so that's why it was hard to open and why I dropped it on the floor. So uh, anyway, just remember that. So if it seems hard to open, it's because the seal is keeping it snug. And then you see it's three uh, AA batteries. Just pull out the tab. And it's supposed to make a sound. Now it didn't make a sound. And I found the same thing happened when we did a thermo. So the first thing we're going to do is what's called the reset. It doesn't say that on the instructions. Got to hold this thing closed with your thumb while you put the screws in here. It doesn't say that in the instructions, but the reality is you definitely need to do this thing called the reset. Now watch what happens here. Oh, that Did was you hear a, that noise? Yeah, that was a cute noise. That's a cute noise. So they recommend you leave the sent the magnet on that little thing that says reset in the back, and then we'll scan in the setup will scan for sensors and you'll notice nothing came up so now the question is did it not come up because i did something wrong or not well the, the secret we've discovered is turn off your bluetooth wait a minute and then turn it back on all right now here to beep oh, again this time beeping. here to beeping that sounded good yeah and now we'll scan again oh, and this time it, it found it so that's the secret here is always do the reset leave the magnet on and then cycle the Bluetooth. I don't know why you have to do it, but you do. That's not what it says on this card. No, it does not say that on a card, so just keep that in mind. Then you press on the thing which says connecting to Zynec Air Room, which is the on the back of the uh, unit. Okay, now it says ready for setup, so we say okay. It says connected, successful connection to the Zynec Air Room. It's the name. They, they give it a name on the, each device that's unique for the uh, for the unit. All right, we'll say OK, and then let's begin setup. So it says uh, LoRaWAN connects to the internet through a gateway. We're not going to set up LoRaWAN. Remember, this is if you want to use LoRaWAN, you have a LoRaWAN setup. We're not going to do that today. Um, but we want to set up the Wi-Fi. So we just press on Wi-Fi, and it's just like any normal setup. OK, so we enter the name and password in here. We do want to use DHCP. It gives us our MAC address. And then uh, it's got firmware, but you can say test. And now it's uh, setting it up. So it says test settings proceed. We'll save the settings. So we're going to say test. It's updating the sensor. It's connecting to check out its Wi-Fi connectivity. And it couldn't do it. It failed. All right. So we're going to cancel this thing here, I guess. Oh, look at that. So I canceled, like that sound. But it says it's there. Oh. So this is interesting. So let's take a look here. So we just brought it in. It's called a room. Aurum. Aurum. So let's see. We'll do this here. So, And okay, let me show you again. I think I know why it failed. It says a room. Okay. Aurum. And I hadn't taken the magnet off. I bet you that's the reason. Oh, that's what the problem was. So let's take a look. It says loading. Data load and process. So it actually worked. It just didn't work through the testing. So let's go back to setup and go back to a room. 
hear it beeping again this time. We're connected. Now, see, now it wants to do the download of this firmware. Wow. So we can do the download to it. Let's first test before we download any firmware. So now it's doing connectivity. It's checking the internet access. It failed. So I'm going to do the update to the firmware because obviously there's something crazy going on here. So it's going to take a few minutes to go off and do this. So we'll give it a second here. Okay, the update has completed. It's restarting. You heard the noise again. Sings that little tune. And another tune. All right, update status firmware updated successfully. Okay, now let's give it a try for a test. Say test again, updating the sensor, connectivity, internet access, and cloud service. This time it all worked. So test succeeded. The test succeeded. Okay, we say okay. And now we can do a save. If I do a save, it'll save this away, and to get back into the screen, you have to use the magnet. So I think the secret to the installation, as you saw, we had some difficulties, was when you do the reset, leave it on for a little while, but then when you get to the test part, take that off. And then if it doesn't work then, go back to the dashboard, then go back to settings, and then I think we can get it to work because then it, it let us update the firmware. So if your firmware is not up to date, make sure you do that firmware update. Normally you shouldn't have this problem if the firmware is up to date, in which case it would have went smoothly. So let's do a save. We'll say settings saved. A lot of devices these days need a firmware update when they get them. Oh, yeah. And, it, and also, the installation never goes as easy as anybody says in their little directions. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Configuration's complete. There we go. Now we have the temperature sensor. As you see now, both our devices, so the thermos here and the Arum is here. Or how do you say Arum? Okay, so let's go back in here now. And again, now we're seeing percentages. So now this is measuring the percent of moisture, right, in our air, I guess. It's not very moist here. It's pretty dry. It says 0%. So there's no data available in this time period from January 28th to January 29th at 1249 p.m., which is now, right? And uh, and we can turn on all our... Oh, i got to add context now. I'm just going to continue. And I'll just turn on all these warnings. So get all those on. And the contacts required. This is interesting. So... This is interesting. So now I have to add new contact names for each of these sensors. So I guess that means if, let's say, for example, I want to let you have this data, right? And then I could let someone else have this data because maybe... Well, soil, and soil moisture, and temperature are two different kinds of sensors. So. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. So I'm just going to put down Mark, and I'll put my phone number in here, create that. Okay, so now I've added it in here. As you see, it has a nice little chart here. This is interesting. The chart has different measurements. And uh, now, since I've added the names, I have my contact in there, and I could add you if I wanted to. And then, of course, this also has the danger zone, so that's the same as before. Uh, but that's it. So uh, it's, last report was two minutes ago. It says there's a moisture level zero, but, you know, we're not in soil, right? So it's not going to measure anything. That's it. We've now set up both the thermoat and the soil moat. So what did you think? I think the, the thermo and the swim mode are pretty neat. Yeah, there's a lot of different things you can use these with. You know, if you have a chest freezer in your garage, you can go and stick it in there, and you don't have to go out there and check it, and you always know that things are cold. So, you know, there's a lot of really interesting things you can do. Yeah. All right, so that's our review. Thanks for watching our video today. We've included more information about the product, including links where to buy in the description box below. And while you're there, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you can find out the next time we do a new video. And for more smart home stories, visit appmyhome.com. Thank you. Thank you.